Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. What gets you up in the morning? What drives your decisions? What do you stand for? No idea, not even sure where to start. I use my values to guide my life and career. It's the basis of how I've built boundaries for myself and stuck to them. Are you ready to dig into what matters to you? Go to thecatchgroup.com to download your free values worksheet. That's thecatchgroup.com to download your free values worksheet to get to your core values and take action on what matters most. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. This is the last episode of the year and of season three. If you haven't listened to last week's episode yet, it is a really great recap episode for our season three with some of our favorite and most popular episodes. And so this week we are looking ahead to the next year for season four in 2024. I love the sound of that season four in 2024. So every year I do a listener survey to get feedback from what you are loving, what you want change, what we, what you want more of feedback is one of my company values. And it's something that I, I cannot not do. So I'm always going to do this listener survey. So in this episode, I thought I'd talk first about that feedback that we got from the survey. And in addition to that, that I would also highlight an exercise from my book values first as a lessons learned. So we'll do kind of like a year in review on a couple of things and really gain insight into what we want to bring into next year after that review. And this is an exercise that you can do too. So I thought I would model it for you and remind you that it exists in the book, but first let's review the survey feedback. I asked what topics would be the most beneficial to hear about in 2024. And here are the top ones chosen by survey respondents, building boundaries, building team culture, strategic planning, learning from experts, and more about me personally. So we'll talk a little bit about each of these. So these five things. So first building boundaries, that has been by far one of the most popular topics I think really because it's just so relatable and we all need help in it. It's a journey and it's just hard to do. I will tell you though, you will get better with practice and intentionality. So we're going to be focusing in 2024 in our continued journey with building boundaries. And we, I know that I always need that help. You know, I recently had a a conversation with a friend and we were talking about boundaries and just different things that we do and we don't do. And she was surprised to to find out that I don't have perfect boundaries with everything. Well, um, guess what? I absolutely do not. So <laughs> it is a work in progress and I think I'm getting better and better at it. And I know that you can and you will, but even I have times where I, I don't um, follow my own boundaries. And so we'll get better at it together next year. I promise. Um, but we'll talk about that more in 2024. Another topic that we'll definitely be digging into further is on building team culture. I will tell you that I am knee deep into this content. I've mentioned it briefly a few episodes here and there, but I'll say it here today. Like officially I have been working on book number two and I'm really excited to dig more into the topics in 2024. And the book is on teams. So I'm writing the second book, which is values first teams on building your team culture tied to your values and leadership style and grounded in your organization's values and how all of that works together. 
and I'm really excited for it. It is still a work in progress, but as the book gets closer to publication, you will be the first to know. And the way that you'll know about it is through this podcast. We'll also continue learning from experts. This is one of the things I love most about the podcast is being in community with others and bringing you points of view, perspectives, and experiences of other people. Some of those who are experts in their field and some of those are leaders in the C-suite to share their experiences with you that you can learn from. We've already started recording some of these guest episodes and I cannot wait for you to hear them. Lastly, this is probably one of the hardest for me is sharing more about me. I did a little of this in season three, most recently with my journey in rowing on the water. So in 2024, I'm going to try and share even more stories and maybe do another Ask Me Anything episode to bring more of me into this podcast. Um, Lastly, in the survey, I asked listeners what action they had taken from the podcast this year. And I wanted to share one response from a listener. They shared, I use a values first approach to my own work, but also in my mentorship of my direct reports. I love it. I love hearing you all taking action. And I really love the description of that, a values first approach. So this is a sneak peek into something else for 2024, but we are going to be launching values first leader certification where you can join a workshop to learn how to become a values first leader. And I'm just really excited about it. You'll hear more about it in 2024. And that is the summary of the audience survey for this year. So more to come in 2024. The next thing that I want to do is to highlight an exercise from Values First from the Experiencing Conflict section. This is called the high-low exercise. And I use this in lots of different ways to basically debrief and do an after-action review of a situation that you can reflect on. You understand your learnings to then understand what you want to bring into the future. So I thought this would be a great way to model this for my experience through the podcast. You can do a similar exercise for your own year end review. You can grab this worksheet and the values first workbook for free on my website at thecatchgroup.com slash values first. And right there, you can find a link to download the free workbook. And in the workbook, it is on page 34 called the high-low exercise. So the first question on that page is what was the situation? So in my review, the perspective and situation I'm thinking about is just holistically in season three of the podcast and what I want to bring into season four. And then the next question is what were the highs of the situation? I mean, there was, there are a ton of highs of this season. I love being in connection with other experts and guests, especially when it's like a favorite author, somebody I've been following for a while. So I have been in 2024, hopefully we'll share more episodes like that. So those are some of my favorites. In addition, I love when I am interviewing some of my clients. So I hope to bring you more of those um, as well, because I think it's just such a tangible example and of their shared experience that that is a gift for others to hear their professional development journey. So when was I living my values is the next question. So the idea is when were you living your values when you were in the highs of those situations and the great moments? I would say I was living my values most of the time here of growth, development, and advocacy by sharing the perspectives of others, sharing my own learnings, like the rowing episode and bringing content to everyone to continue to develop themselves. I feel like the podcast is a very tangible form of my values. It really is. That's why I enjoy it so much. The next question is what were the lows of the situation? I will tell you that I don't feel like there were a ton of lows, but there were some weeks that I had a heavier workload than I would have liked. And I wasn't as ahead in content creation and episodes as I would have liked to been. So generally I like to be at least a month or two ahead in content so we can plan ahead or have the flexibility to move things around if we want to. And at that point in the podcast where it was probably the, I had the lowest feeling about it. We probably, I I know it was me. I wasn't following the process. So we have a really good process down as long as we follow it. 
but I wasn't always following that process. So the next question is, when did you feel at your worst and what was happening? So it was just then, like when I wasn't following a process, I knew that worked. And I think it's because we've been doing the podcast for so long. I take it for granted. I have a really great team that always gets it done. Sometimes I don't prioritize the podcast because I'm, I'm working on other work that has deadlines too. And so I, so I might push off a final approval of an episode because my workload is higher and I'll, I'll say, Oh, I'll listen to it at night. And then sometimes I forget and it pushes to the next day. And the impact of that is that my team has then less time to do it before it needs to get, go out because you know, this is a weekly thing. So um, it does come out every Wednesday. And so there's a timeline associated with all this stuff. So my biggest takeaway, this is the last question on the high, low worksheet is what is your biggest takeaway to live your values more consistently? So what else do I want to bring into 2024? I want to follow the processes that I know work. So this is the exact advice I give others. On the previous page in the workbook, on page 33, there's a a worksheet called Red Flags and Traps Worksheet. And one of the traps, number three, is a trap of being aware of not consistently using systems that support your boundaries. So I have fallen into that trap this year. I have not been consistently using things that I know work. So we put in these work processes on purpose so that nobody feels rushed and everyone has time to get to everything. And when I don't follow that process, then I'm burdening others and also being a bottleneck, which I hate. So the bigger indicator here, the thing that's under that is really about workload. So I need to pay more attention to balancing workload to support myself, my team, and really live my value of balance. Remember, it's not work-life balance, but the balance of my priorities. So this didn't happen a ton, but it happened a few times to know that I want to get more consistent about this process. So what does that mean for me and the podcast in 2024? I think it means being more planful in the process, getting more intentional about the content further in advance to create space for living my boundary tied to balance. It means being more intentional around content, which may include more intentional podcast series, Like we did earlier this year with the career transition series, I totally followed the process then. I had it totally mapped out for multiple months. And so I felt like I did it well then. And I'm hoping to bring that into 2024. And it could also mean hearing multiple episodes from one guest. We've never done that before. And it's something that I want to think about, like a part one and a part two to really dig into some topics and actions. I think it means... Also for 2024, more intentional rest in general and focusing on the things that are just so important. And I want to continue to bring you great content to do your best work. And that means taking care of ourselves so we can sustain the work that we are doing. With that, we are going to take a break that we usually take around the holidays to make room for the things that matter most. For me, that centers around my value of family. We have a lot of family time planned with holiday activities, travel, and really just quality time. And as we part ways here on the podcast for the holiday break, I'd suggest that you take a few actions for yourself. Reflect on what's working and what isn't. Use the high-low worksheet and figure out what you are bringing into next year with you. I hope that you are able to get the same rest and recovery that you need in this time of year. I hope that you are able to live out your values, whatever is most important to you. And we'll see you in 2024 for season four. Remember, your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care.